All right, we've been uh, discussing the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son, so named. Um, it's actually not, doesn't have a name in the Bible called the prodigal son. Um, and um, if you read the first few words there, and this is a verse 11, Luke 15, verse 11, a certain man had two sons. You realize that uh, the story really is about the father, and it's about, uh, let's say, I, I kind of jotted it down. It's about the father and what he had in terms of sons and goods and house and love and feast and relationship and sacrifice and patience and purpose. Um, and, uh, well, I'll just read the next one. We make it about the prodigal, sin, repentance, being blessed after abusing the father's love and goods. That's because, you know, that's what repentance, forgiveness does. It allows us to abuse him regularly and then, and then get good stuff for it. Okay, well, that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is not even straight up about the son, the prodigal son. It's about a certain man who is described as the father. So in light of that, now I'd like to read a portion of this, uh, starting with verse 11. And I would like for you to, to, to maybe listen. You can follow along, certainly, but, but also to listen and to look to see if you can see the... Uh, emphasis that is there because when it says a certain man had I don't I'm, I'm not that great at grammar but it seems like the certain man is the object and he had something is that grammatically correct okay so uh, and he said this is Jesus talking he's, and he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father. Father, give me goods. You see that? Where, where's the source? The father is the source. And the son is looking to the father, or looking to the goods. He's looking to what he can get from the father at this stage. But the source is the father. The certain man, he's, it's a certain, to Jesus, this is a certain person. It's the Father. Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. All right, so what we discover in those words is that the son here, the prodigal son, is trying to make him the object that is important. Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. But he's, he's getting those goods from the Father. Okay. He's getting those from the Father. Now, you know, and we'll read, we'll read that scripture again that we did last week, but you know that we are called sons of God, whether male or female. We are termed sons of God by Christ. So this, this story can relate to the Father and to us as family members and to how we relate or the general relationship that we have with God that we think is so good, but it really is very selfish. It's very me-centered. Portion of goods that falleth to me. Um, and he divided, this is talking about the Father, and he divided unto them his living. A couple of weeks ago, Mallory pointed out that this didn't just say the father's goods. It was his living. Um, uh, it would be a little bit like Alistair's dad if he, you know, got the farm and all of this stuff. And Well, you could say it's his goods, but it's his whole life. I mean, come on. This is the Father's existence. Um, and we, 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 we dumb it down because we're numbed down. We dumb it down to just 
there's a God, we don't even call him Father, and we, we think that we exist on this earth simply for him to worry about us and think about us all the time and work towards making earth life happy when, as we've been saying in this process, that that God put his son in us and when Jesus rose from the dead, he said, I go unto my father and to your father. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Our father. And, okay, so we can use the terminology, amen. We can pray, oh, father. But do, are we talking to him as a father? And do we see those things are really his living his living, and we're only getting it because we're in the family and because he loves us. Um, but he's wanting something more than us to, just to be happy over what he can do for us, you know. Uh, I, think it was in, I think it was last time when I was in Ireland, I, I was reminded of a cartoon, and I just remembered it again. And it's just, it's just a one-picture cartoon. There's this old lady sitting in a rocking chair, and she's very old, and... And there's this young man standing there, not a teenager, but a, you know, <clears throat> a young man. And the caption underneath it says, yeah, I know, Ma, but what have you done for me lately? <laughs> That's not good, folks. So, um, so let's read on. <clears throat> And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together. He, he gathered all that he, he got. Or you could say all that was his. Do you see how there's an emphasis on this son, all right, but it is a, it's a shameful emphasis. And, and folks, sometimes our hearts can be shameful. I know, you know, I think even, uh, even personally, you know, pursuing the Lord and seeking the Lord and wanting the Lord, uh, the new year has flipped over, and, you know, I've found myself going, you know what, there's junk that, that's not, you know, it's not that I, I'm not pressing in for the Lord, it's just flesh and allowing certain things. And I said, I'm done, I'm not going to do that. This flesh, stupid stuff that is stupid in light of what's really important. Amen. Stupid in light of losing the father right. or, or, you know, being separated enough to, uh, what, to do what? To break his heart. And I, you know, and I, so, you know, just the clock flipped over and my heart by the grace of God and the Holy Spirit flipped over and said, hey, let's sharpen it up. Let's sharpen it up. And so, anyway, and, and not many days after, the younger one gathered all together and he took his journey, see how the emphasis is there, into a far country. And so, this far country, as you know, this story becomes so important. Because that's what we do in our hearts sometimes. We get far from the Lord when we think we're close. And I think that if, when you're surrounded by his goods, <laughs> which is really his living, but his goods, I think that we feel we're closer than what we are. And I'm speaking from, I'm speaking from my experience. You can feel closer when you're actually closer to the goods, closer to his things. But... But the story is, the point of it is to draw our hearts out to the Father and to come back to the Father and to appreciate the goods now more as his living. What he's given himself to for us. What he's given himself to for us. Um... But then once you get in a far country, then this stuff starts happening. 
and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Okay, so, you know, it's tough, isn't it? Because, you know, we, we, we blow all of the good things. You know, okay, the Lord says, I'll bless you. I'll do this. I'll open this door. I'll take care of you. I'll do all this. And he does all of that. And we end up in a far country. And then what happened? He, he lets a famine happen after we've spent it all. <laughs> You're going, what? No, no, it's blessing time again, Father. <laughs> you know, and it's not blessing time again. Um, it's not that he wants to withhold his blessings, because he doesn't. No father does want to, but, you know. But it's not, it's not blessing time. It's an appointed time of the Father. It is meant to be the time of life. Some of y'all remember the sharing on that. It's meant to be the time of life. Are we aware of the times? Amen. You know? Are we aware of the times in which we are? Or are we just living however we think we're, you know, want to live, really? I'm ordering our life after our times and our seasons. So the Lord allows a famine after he spent all of his goods. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and he joined himself to a citizen of that country. Okay, so if it's a far country, this is, this is not a Jew. Okay. Uh, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. All right. So... Um, the quickest route, it's not guaranteed, but the quickest route to get back to God is to just blow it so mightily that all you care about is Him. You know, and you just, you, I just, you know, because you really don't have anything else. It's a sad story, but it's true that it, it jerks us up and it, and it, tells us what we're what we've lost and it um, and it, it starts choking out the husks and all that I did to get to that point and um, and it opens your heart to the father's house ultimately ultimately to the father all right so um, And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. All right, so this little, I'm going to throw this out, and I'm not, you don't have to agree with this or believe this, but it is something that I'm going to dig into and show you some some scriptures and some reality behind it, whether that is the case in this exact scripture or not. Remember uh, last class we talked about um, that um, there are, uh, that, that we look at God as either the provider or our portion. And there are plenty of scriptures that talk about both. Our relationship the relationship with the prodigal son as he looked at the father was his provider not as not father you're my portion or jesus you're my portion uh, i have no problem with that i thank god i mean I, uh, in so many ways he's you know our provider but I don't want that to be my relationship with him. I want him to be my portion so that if I had nothing and was in want, I could sit in that hog pen and say, at least I still got the Lord and really have that as true. Um, but when it says he came to himself, and we'd also talked about this fact of being born again sons of God, and we'll look at those scriptures next. Born again sons of God. Beloved, now are you the sons of God but that the Son himself must be formed in us, Romans 8, that we be made conformable unto his Son, made in the image of his Son, a 
the Son. He's, he's wanting the Son, not just us to be born again sons. But you can't have the Son unless you're born again. <laughs> but you can be born again and not have the Son formed in you. And we probably won't get into it this time, but hopefully next time we'll see that a little more clearly. Um, and so in light of that, if that's true, and I'm saying that that may not apply to this verse, but I, I want you to just think of this thought, and that is when he came to himself, what if in our circumstances the son in us kind of, we come to ourselves and we begin to realize, we begin to hear from the son in us that says, go back to the father. Because just being born again sons doesn't make us smart enough to always do that. You know what I'm saying? We just, we'll just keep going. I mean, we will. Let me tell you, I know absolutely that you, you can just keep wandering farther and further and further. But the Son, thank God for the Son, all glory to the Son, all hope, Christ in you, the Son is that hope. Or we don't have any hope because we're not the hope. If we say the hope is in us, we better be talking about Jesus. Because <laughs> uh, thank God, you know. I mean, he, he opens our ears or he opens our eyes or he opens our heart. You know, and so the, I was just kind of viewing that again, whether that's the case here or not. I was viewing that as all of a sudden he comes to himself and he realizes, you know, the sun is my life, but he doesn't fully know that. It's just he, there was a moment of coming to himself, which is the sun. Because, you know, we're one with the sun. You do know that. We're one, and being one with him is everything because it carries us. It is, it is the life breath of, of spiritual reality. It's not just a doctrine. It has to be so real to us that we know Jesus died to make us one. He didn't just die to save you from hell. Especially if you're pretty much the same that you were with the things that we're going to send you to hell, and then you go up to heaven, and you go, well, here I am. And he's going, you know, I really wasn't just wanting you like this. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Always. Okay. So where does pride come from? When I'm in the ascendancy. When you're in the ascendancy. When you're, when you're more in the forefront. Okay. Where does humility come from? when we have seen him and the contrast brings us low so that he may be lifted high. Okay, so notice I didn't say where does humility come from. When we get broken and you know, you do realize that being broken ground is not what God wants. He wants you broken so he can put the seed in the ground and bring forth fruit out of you. So we're all working towards being broken. <laughs> Just bring me to brokenness. Well, you know, you can be broken ground. I can go out here and, and plow up the ground out there and not plant a seed in it and go, the ground goes, oh. And, you know, then we're proud because we're broken. You know, I'm so broken compared to the, those hard clumps over there. Big hard, you know, cement Robert, and, you know, all of it. <laughs> And of course, that's you know. Then we're then we're comparing ourselves one with another, and we're just in trouble with the Father. But we never know it because we never show up. You know, we never get into His presence. And He goes, you know, we go, oh, oh Father, well, what did I do now? <laughs> you know, because we we're too busy. You know, off to the races. <laughs> you know, so. Um, and when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? All right, so this, uh, this awakening um, is tangible, it's practical, but it's going to lead to spiritual. And, and I'll just end this portion with that. Um, and many times the Lord starts with the outward and works in. 
for example, the tabernacle, when he gave the order of it to Moses, he started with the Holy of Holies and worked out because God starts with his son and works out. But for us, when he set it all up, we had to start at the, the gate and then the altar and then the labor and then we had to work on into it. And so many times this, it's, he's dealing with our flesh in a certain way to bring us to a step then with something else to bring us to another step and to an, un, until we find ourselves in the Holy of Holies with him, seeing him. So it's, I mean, it's okay. It's, it's, it's just the order because we're so thick, you know. We're so dense when it comes to really knowing his heart um, because we can know stuff. We know so much stuff it makes us dense, you know. Um, and when, when it just gets down to, you know, all I care about is knowing you, Lord, because if I see you, I will be changed into your image. And if I'm changed into your image, you will do all of the things that need necessary that we call ministry, world evangelization, feed the hungry, do all this stuff. You will be the life of that. And it won't be our ministry anymore. It'll be the, the result of life. Okay, let's take a break and we'll be back in about five, ten minutes. <laughs> 